Hi. If you are prepared for the CAT but believe very strongly that you need to give another shot at the test, then this is the video for you. Now, before you start your preparation for the test, there is one thing that you need to be sure of, and that you have to go for a rear tilt. Now, if you have, let's say, some GDPI calls in hand this year, then it would be a very good idea for you to go ahead with the preparation for your GDPI rounds and try to convert those calls. Because let's say, for example, you convert the calls that you have in hand, then what will happen is you will go into the attempt with the confidence that the only thing that you need to focus on is the theory side of things, and that if you end up getting calls at the end of the season, you will end up converting them as well. On the other hand, let's say you do not convert the calls this year. Then what happens is you go into your next attempt with the knowledge that you will have to work alongside on your GDPI skills as well, and that is an added advantage rather than getting surprised at the end of the season. With that in mind, make sure that you are attending each and every one of the GDPI calls that you have this season seriously, and only then you start thinking about your rear. Now, if you are worried as to if there will be enough time to prepare for the re-attempt, then let me tell you upfront that it's very easy to go for a re-attempt, honestly. Because what happens in that case is you will have a good six months to prepare for the test, and considering that already you have had calls this year, it should not be a difficult journey over the remaining six months. So now that you have decided to go for a re-attempt, what needs to be done in this particular situation is. You have to know what are the advantages that repeaters have. The first thing that they know is they know the entire drill of the test taking plan and strategy. So you would have gone through one round of preparation wherein you will be knowing your strengths, your weaknesses, the areas where you have tangible inputs, following which you will improve in that particular thing. The second thing that will be beneficial to you in this regard is the fact that you have gone again through the drill and you know what are the various question types, what exactly happens during the test, and how to face yourself within those two hours of testing. Now, does that mean that repeaters are at an advantage when it comes to comparison with freshers? Not really, because what happens in this particular context is that repeaters enter the test with a lot of baggage as well. There are a lot of preconceived notions that exist. There is a lot of rigidity that is there, and obviously, because you haven't cleared it in the first attempt, it will tell you that you are low on self-confidence as well. So that basically balances it. Also, if you look at the syllabus that we have, preparing for CAT purely in terms of concepts will require around 400 hours of effort, and that roughly translates into six months of effort for a fresher as well as a repeater. Now that is not something that will give the repeater an edge. So if you are a repeater, of course there will be the advantage that you will have in terms of having gone through the entire syllabus and the test taking experience. But then again, you will also have some rigidity with it as well. So it balances the bit, and so you will not really have a lot of advantage as such. But obviously, you will not be at a disadvantage as well. So how do you go about preparing for the CAT again this? Year? Now the first thing that you have to realize is you have to figure out what exactly went wrong in the previous year, and you have to get rid of all the preconceived notions that you might have had in terms of, let's say, the general noise that goes around in the test prep segment. You have to shut out all the news of the competition of the sort of unfair practices that happen around. So once you get rid of all these notions and you know what exactly went wrong in your previous attempt. You would have a clear path as to what should be done in this particular attempt. Now you have to understand what all topics are there at the CAT and what all topics are there that you need to prepare for this particular year as well. Coming to the prep structure, you should focus on all the topics that are present at the CAT. Now, if you are someone who has already scored more than 80 percentile in any of the sections, then there is a clear path ahead of you. You will not really need to work very hard in terms of developing concepts from scratch. You will just have to have a look at all the concepts that would have appeared at the CAT or would have been studied over the last year, and then whatever are the remainder concepts, you will have to work on them separately. So, if you have had an 80 plus percentile at a section, then that makes your job slightly easier in terms of preparing for a repeat attempt. On the other hand. Let's say you had less than 80 percentile at a section in the previous year. 
in that case it is advisable that you start from the concepts from scratch and build your way up the concept now what needs to be done in this particular case is you have to break down the sections into areas so we can identify nine broad areas in terms of reading comprehension verbal ability data interpretation logical reasoning and in terms of quantitative ability arithmetic algebra geometry number theory and model math once you have gone through each and every concept which would amount to somewhere around 125 topics from all these areas that i just mentioned you should be good to go into the next phase but considering that you have a sub 80 percentile make sure that you understand each and every topic from these areas thoroughly before you get into the practice stage the second stage of your cat prep would involve getting better in terms of applying the concepts that you would have studied now again if you have crossed the 80th percentile easily in your previous attempt this segment again should not be very difficult to pass however if you have not cleared the 80 percentile barrier then this is basically going to be a very crucial phase in your entire preparation journey in this phase you will learn how to apply the concepts that you would have studied so at the cat you would have already observed that you don't really get questions that are direct applications of the concepts that you would have studied you would have to be thorough in terms of the various cases wherein the concepts can be used and the various twists and turns that can be integrated into a particular question in this journey or in this part of the journey rather what you would be doing is you would be going through previous cat papers you would also be going through master classes and you would also be going through your practice module at the end of this phase you should have great awareness in terms of what exactly are the topics that you are especially good at and what exactly are the topics that you are not so good at be it in terms of knowing the concept or applying that particular concept the third and final phase of your preparatory journey would involve a lot of testing now you will have to take a lot of sim cards and you will have to take these sim cards with a lot of aggression and when i say aggression i basically mean that you have to take each test with a lot of intent and you need to be certain of the decisions that you are making throughout the test now during the test whenever you get stuck you have to be absolutely brutal and critical of yourself and have to leave that particular question then and there you can of course solve those questions once the test is done but during the test you should always be moving from one question to another you should not spend a lot of idle time during the test and that is basically a learning that you should be improving on throughout the simcat schedule now what you need to do in this regard is you need to cross the threshold of 80 85 90 or even 95 percentile in one of the sim cards and that is going to be possible only if you attempt a lot of questions so make sure that you are attempting each and every question that you can within those 40 minutes or 1 hour depending on the sectional time limits and you will see yourself getting better with each passing sim card now just solving sim cards is not something that is going to be enough you also have to analyze the sim cards thoroughly and to help you with that there are two features that are going to be present in sim cards this way the first thing is basically going to be the p value that exists now the p value is nothing but the performance of the entire population and also of the top 10 percentilers in a particular sim card now your performance at a question level should ideally be better than or at least close to the p value of the top 10 percentilers for that particular sim card the second thing that you need to do is you need to practice questions that are at a sim card level to help you with that we have the feature of ai enabled adaptive questions now if you go to a question from quant or lrdi you will be able to see a button at the bottom which will help you practice questions that are generated by an ai and they will gradually become more difficult as you progress and that will help you tackle similar questions if they appear at a later point in time finally if you have the bandwidth then we would suggest that you go for profile building activities as well now this could be anything ranging from participating in competitions taking up projects or internships to going for some accolades at your workplace as well whatever adds to your cv you should go ahead and do you can also go for certain certifications that are offered online now in this regard what you need to do is you need to understand which is the specialization that you intend to go for and only then go for certification 
because a lot of these certifications involve significant time and money in terms of investing. Now, once you do the certifications, make sure that you know the content in the certifications inside out and you also know the practical implications of these certifications. Now, the certifications could include various areas like say for example, marketing research or consumer behavior or fundamentals of marketing, financial accounting, financial modeling, derivatives, HR, operations, supply chain management, you name it and you will find a certification too. But again, ensure that you are doing the certification after a bit of due diligence. The second thing that you have to keep in mind is, do not prioritize anything else above your cat trip. Because you cannot really have a very good CV and not get into the interview. That would be a waste of time, that would be a waste of effort. So make sure that you prioritize your cat preparation over everything else and only if you have the bandwidth at the end, you go for your profile building activity. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you found this to be of some help, do consider giving it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Also, if you have a query or a suggestion, please put it in the comment section below. All the best.